Hello and thank you for tuning in again. This is the fourth and last part of this small video series where we are going to try to move things around a little bit, starting with the floating grid. The floating grid is possibly the easiest one to animate. We just have to add basically two lines. I'm using the use frame hook. As I described in one of the other videos, this is a hook that basically runs on every frame before the scene is rendered. And I'm using the state variable, which contains the 3JS clock to get how much time has passed since we started the project. I'm scaling this value by a small amount and then I'm setting it as the offset in the Y direction of the diffuse texture. So instead of moving the mesh with, with its position property, we're doing something else. We're changing the offset of the texture. Now, since the texture is repeating, when we change the offset, it is going to give the impression that the object is moving, when in reality we're not moving it because position is going to remain the same, but the diffuse texture is going to change, or rather the offset at which we're sampling the texture is going to change by a little amount on every frame depending on how much time has elapsed since the project has started. And it's moving, or rather it looks like it's moving, but just the texture offset is being changed. Now we'll do basically the same exact thing for the ground component. I'm basically using the same hook, same T variable where I'm storing the uh, time that has elapsed since I started a project, but this time I'm changing two textures instead of one. With the same setup though, still changing the Y value of the offset. And the ground is moving, and this is almost giving me motion sickness because it's kind of strange. Like the ground and the floating grid are moving, but everything else is like standing still, which is really weird. Next part will be moving the rings. Alright, basically this is just a single line change, but it's not a super intuitive change, so I'll try to explain visually what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm using the elapse variable in the same exact way that I was doing in the other two components, and then I changed this line to this one. Now, we have 14 rings of alternating colors in the scene, and each of these rings is spaced by 3.5 units from each other. The rings that are far away from the car, both in the front and in the back, won't be visible because their opacity will be zero if they are distant enough. And we can use that to our advantage by employing a little trick. What we could do is move all the rings in this direction by 3.5 units times two, such that they move by this amount, and then place them back in this original position. This will give the effect that the rings are continuously moving when in reality they're being moved only by 3.5 units times two, by basically seven units in this direction before being reset to their original position, which is this one. And basically this is how we're going to do that. So over time, we're adding this amount to the Z position of each ring. And the amount that we're adding goes up to seven before being reset to zero such that the rings will move by seven units and then they would get placed back to their original position. And that's all there is to it, the rings are now moving. We're getting closer and closer and the scene is becoming more and more believable. Uh, next we'll focus on the tires of the car. And this is how we're spinning the tires of the car. I'm referencing the GLTF model that uh, was returned by useloader. And then I'm trying to find the indexes of all the sub meshes of this root mesh that are the tires of the car. And these are the indexes. Then I'm rotating the tires of the car by this amount along the X axis. And if you're asking yourself why we're multiplying times two four times instead of doing it just once here, well, you know, we're not that intelligent in this series, and so that's how we're doing it. Of course. Also, don't forget to import use frame, and that's really it. If you refresh the page, the tires should be spinning. And indeed they are. Now, we'll move on to the boxes, and that will be finally done. First thing first, I've created a new function called getInitialPosition, which is a copy of ResetPosition. And then I'm going to use it in place of ResetPosition here. And now I've slightly changed reset position. So I'm not only using set position here instead of just returning the vector, but I've also changed the way that I'm calculating the Z position. And why did I do that? So when I'm initially positioning the boxes, I want them to be randomly displaced between minus 15 and plus 15 in the Z axis. But after moving the boxes enough in the Z direction, at some point we want them to respawn in front of the car. And this is what reset position is doing. It's just basically at some point we'll call this function to respawn the box in front of the car. 
Every box will also have its own timer and I'm increasing the value of the timer by delta times 1.2 on every frame. And by the way, delta as a reminder is how much time has passed since the last frame was rendered. So we're essentially creating and updating the value of this timer on every frame because we're going to directly use it to compute a new Z value for this box that we're using here. Starting from the initial Z position of the box, minus the value of the timer. And as I mentioned previously, at some point after the box has been moved enough in the Z direction, so in this case, when the new Z value of the box is smaller than minus 10 units, then we are resetting its position. So we're putting the box in front of the car and then resetting the timer. And that alone is enough to create the illusion that we're infinitely spawning new boxes, when in reality we're just repositioning the ones that were already in the scene from the very beginning. And that's it, we're done! I hope you guys enjoyed this short introduction to Reactory Fiber. Compared to Vanilla 3JS, it gives you access to a plethora of fantastic one-liners, and in fact I'm sure that I'm going to use a lot of these in my future 3D projects for the web. Please leave a like if you like this series, and I'd love to hear your suggestion for future videos in case you have any. And yeah, having said that, I hope to see you on our next adventure. Cheers!